Can Syracuse coach Jim Beheim successfully defend against a defamation suit filed against him by one of the alleged victims in this sordid child molestation scandal at Syracuse? Reese Norris returns, a prominent Hartford attorney. Uh, you know, Beheim's the legendary coach, but I got to tell you, the more that I see this story, I don't know if he's going to be in this position long. I think his days are numbered for a number of reasons. First, starting with the president gave her vote of confidence. I said, you know what? That's the first sign he'll be gone. And now this defamation suit, which is a major distraction. Your thoughts on it? It's a major distraction, and he should stay to coaching. Uh, this is not something that he is schooled in and how to make appropriate statements. And his statements were horrific. Uh, they accused the uh, alleged victims of being liars, accused them out for money, said that he believed fine completely. Um, I don't know what would motivate him to go to such extremes, uh, but they were they were ill-advised. And then he goes with kind of a lukewarm apology. Right. Uh, this reason. Mike, we, we do have Beheim's first comments, right? Okay, let's just go ahead and play that so we can catch folks up on the coach's first comments when the allegations first hit. Okay. Jim Beheim. I've been here for 36 years, and I've never worried about anything. I just do. I don't worry. I do, I do my job. I do my job. What happened on my watch, we'll, we will see. When the investigation is done, we will find out what happened on my watch. All right. That actually was probably the second one. The first one, he was much more, these guys were lying, they're after money, et cetera. Now, the problem is the story changed, and he's come across as a bit arrogant, right, in all this. And uh, what would you have advised him? In this. I would advise to keep his mouth shut and say that uh, he's disturbed for the program with the allegations against a coach that he has um, had nothing but uh, positive uh, relationships with over the years and uh, he's not going to rush to judgment mm. and he wants to hear what the, the facts are. That would be an appropriate comment on his behalf. Right. Uh, but but uh, that's if you get lawyered up, right? If you're, if you're not lawyered up, if you're a longtime friend, and you hear these, what you consider to be outrageous charges. I mean, your first action is to say, are you crazy? This is my buddy. There's no way these kind of things would have happened. That's sort of the visceral human reaction. Isn't there some empathy for a guy who is a longtime friend being loyal to his friend? Isn't there some human empathy for, okay, he's speaking strongly? Um, I, I don't have any empathy for him. I'm sorry. Uh, he's a, a public figure. Uh, he's, a, he's a big persona. Syracuse, everyone knows his name. Uh, his statements are going to be uh, more uh, strongly taken than someone else who is, who's not in that position. So right. when he calls them a liar, uh, he, as far as those people are concerned, he's the face of Syracuse basketball. Right. And you better be right. You're saying if you say those kind of statements, you better be right. They can't be any gray area because now you have trouble. So That's right. Now there's a defamation suit. So now can you survive defamation? You're the, you're the lawyer here. Beheim also then soft pedal and apologized for the comments, and we'll hear that now, Mike. Let's hear the apology after the, uh, you know, demonizing of these accusers. Yes. I believe I misspoke very badly in my response to the allegations that have been made. I shouldn't have questioned what the accusers expressed or their motives. I am really sorry that I did that and I regret any harm that I caused. He got lawyered up there now, Reese. That, that's a lawyered up statement right, right there, that's right? A lawyered up statement <laughs> and, and who understands the, the, the value of a retraction <laughs> when one is accused of a slanderous statement. He looked at more than one time to read the precise words of that. So now, can they really clip him on defamation? He made some uh, charges or he gave his opinion right? He then retracted and soft pedaled. Um, can you really get a guy for defamation if he's expressing his opinion? You know, my feeling is in these cases, it's all about your, your feelings of pride. It's not about money. I mean, this is, this is not a big money lawsuit. This well, is about so. pride. You no. know, Gloria, well, let, let me play those advocate. I think with Gloria Alder in there, it is about money. And that here's one thing, and you're the lawyer, that she can't win a defamation suit. But she can create enough pressure on Syracuse and Bayheim and say, cut her a check and make her go away. Isn't that what this is all about? You hit it right on the head. A jury's not going to award them a lot of money under these facts. Right. But you're absolutely right. The political pressure and university pressure is going to be on Bayheim and, and this university to reach a financial settlement. And if that's her assessment, I think she's correct. And now, do you set precedent? If you cut a check for that, 
is Syracuse more exposed civilly when they come after them for other allegations? I mean, that's just one lawsuit, right? Defamation. Then you have culpability and, and negligence. So you're going to have a couple lawsuits here against the, the university. You, you are, but you're not going to have precedent because they're going to be confidentiality agreements that are standard operating procedure in matters such as this, and it won't be able to use be used against them in additional matters. But if you cut a check, though, if the mentality is, hey, we're willing to cut a check. Doesn't that help the lawyers who are defending the accused saying, listen, we know they're going to cut a check here, so let's put a little pressure on them. Let's, this gives me some leverage to know that they're in a check-cutting mode right now, so to speak. You know what I mean? It may. I mean, if I'm Syracuse, I'm upset with Jim Beheim's comments. Right, and that's why I think he may not survive, because he further exposed them to, to damages, I think, uh, and they already, they already were exposed, and he further exposed them now with defamation. It's I, one more check to cut. Having heard his statements, there's no question that he was schooled by the attorneys <laughs> of Syracuse University who told him the facts of life and what he had to say on that camera. All right, Jerry Sandusky, about 30 seconds, the Penn State assistant coach. He basically uh, foreclosed on his, his right to have a, a uh, pretrial. What does that all mean in layman's language? Why is that relevant? It's relevant because of the preliminary hearings, just as a probable cause to take the case to trial. Uh, and his lawyers said there was nothing to be gained by having that hearing. I mean, we have probable cause hearings in Connecticut in, in certain cases, such as murder, and uh, those of us determine whether we're going to proceed or not, depending on case by case. It's probably better that he waived. This is a dicey case in that you may have a bunch of allegations, but no real eyewitnesses, even the one at Penn State is a little shaky what he really saw. How do you win this case if you're the, the, uh, the uh, prosecution? What are the most compelling points here? I think the prosecution is going to have to rely on the credibility of these witnesses and what other things they can show. For example, the gift giving, uh, various trips, corroboration of what the victims claim happened. I think corroboration is key if you don't have eyewitnesses. And if you're the defense now in 15 seconds, you're the defense. How do you hold off the prosecution? What's your strongest point to make here? Well, he should have kept his, his mouth shut, first of all, so that was the biggest problem right. for the defense lawyer in this case. Um, but uh, at this point, I, I think the best way to the defense is just to, to try to delve into the facts as much as you can, determine the credibility issues. You got to run. So basically, he loved kids, but not in that way. It's going to be the only case. That's what he says. All right. Thanks to all our guests, Chris Keating and Reese Norris. Remember, catch our show 24-7, ctnow.com slash Stan. Friend us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. For the good folks here at Fox Connecticut, I'm Stan Simpson. The Morning News and Tim Lammers is next.